Hi and welcome to my video on integrating periodic functions like sine and cos. So let's start with just a bit of a review. And I'm going to start with one of this long diagram. So I'd say, here's sine x, here's cos x, here's negative sine x, and here is negative cos x. And this diagram works really nicely. So if I derive sine x, I get cos x. That's my do dx. And if I derive cos x, I get negative sine x and derive again, and derive again. I've got a little circle of derivatives there, and it's a four-piece circle that, that spins around like that, which is wonderful. Of course, if I go the other way, uh, which I'll do here in yellow, and I might make this more like a square, I integrate negative sine x, I get cos x. If I integrate cos x, I get sine x, integrate sine x, I get negative cos x, integrate negative cos x, I get negative sine x. In terms of remembering this, and I'll just put another integral sign, you don't have to remember one. In fact, all you have to remember is if you derive sine x, you get cos x. Remember that, then you know that cos x must go to the negative of the opposite, stays negative, goes positive. You can remember all the derivatives. And if you derive sine x, you get cos x. It means that if you integrate cos x, you get sine x, and then the rest of that falls into place as well. So you have to remember one thing, and that's it. So we're going to use that one thing and that idea. And again, we'll start with that. Let's just try a derivative and see what it looks like, and then we'll put it in place for integration. So let's start with y equals uh, 2 sine, and you know we're often going to see something like pi on 2 times t. Okay, so this is more like a motion situation. I've got t in there, which usually represents time. So if I my, my rate of change, which in this case will be dy dt, well, then I get 2 cos pi on 2 t times by the derivative of the inside, which is pi on 2. Of course, you'll know that this equals pi now, 2 times pi on 2, cos pi on 2 t. But what's important here is that I derived sine, and I've got cos, and I've just got this multiplying factor, which happens to be the b value, that multiplying the inside. It, it is what I get if I derive the inside function. So then the question obviously remains, well, what happens if I integrate, let's say in this case, pi of cos pi on 2t with respect to t. If I integrate that, then I'll get this. Pi sine pi on 2t, but I have to divide by the derivative of the inside, which is pi on 2, and I have a plus c. And of course, dividing by pi on 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 on pi. The pi's cancel out, I'm left with 2 sine pi on 2t. Which leads, of course, to this rule, which I'll write over here, and then I'll do one more example. And that is if you integrate, and it's going to apply for the other ones as well, if you integrate a sine b of t, and I'll put it in a normal transformational form, minus c, like that. Okay, or it could be written as, so that's a normal transformational form, you'll see it a lot for contextual situations. It could be sine of bt minus c, which you're probably more used to. Either one of those, it's a linear function on the inside. When you integrate that with respect to t, you'll get a, and this becomes cos of bt minus c. But we have to divide by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is b, and we add a constant, which I'm going to call k this time, because I've already used c. I've got to be careful not to double use my, um, my unknowns. And of course, you might be thinking right now, hold on a second, if I integrate sine, I get negative cos, so of course we've got to be aware of that, and just pop a negative in the front. If this was a cos, that would become positive sine. So just to make sure we get our negatives in the right spot. But that's the rule, as it's not really a rule associated with this. What I'm going to do is rub off a couple of things, and we'll do one more example. Alright, let's just do this last example. We're going to integrate 7 sine of 3t plus t with respect to t. Lots of t's in there. Okay, the first thing we need to recognise, I've done this deliberately, is we have term 1 and term 2. This one is a polynomial, I oh, say a periodic, and this one is a polynomial linear term. So we're going to treat them separately and we're going to use the separate rules. So I'm going to integrate these. The first one gives me 7, my apologies, 7 cos of 3t, but of course sine integrates to give negative cos. And I have to divide that by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3. And over here I get plus t. t becomes t squared. 
divided by the new power, 2, and of course I get a plus, a constant, C. And I can simplify that however I want. I'm going to write it down as 7 thirds, cos 3t plus a half, t squared plus c. Um, but, you know, obviously the line before would have been perfectly fine. Uh, again, you know, the integration of sine is, is fairly trivial, and you, you'll notice here that we don't have that big sine of x cubed plus x or something really, really complex in terms of chain product rule. We can't integrate those. All we've got are these. And that's all we can deal with. So um, the integration side of things is a little bit simpler than some of the differentiation, but you do have to know the rules and just make sure you follow those rules and get your notation right. Happy days.